Good morning, guys. It is a little chilly out here, but we are still going to get some garden work done and I am going to give you guys a tour. Look at all these sad seedlings I have left over. I've been trying to give them away to my friends, um, but everybody seems full up on seedlings. So they're just kind of slowly dying here because I don't have the heart to kill them. And I'm always like, but what if I need them? And with some of these, it looks like I might actually need them, um, but we'll get to that later in the tour. I've got my clippers and my string, and today's task is getting all of the tomatoes tied to the trellis. But before we go any further, you're welcome. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Rachel, and I do this garden tour every single week. It's a little informal, but I try to do the same thing every time so that everybody knows what's going on in the garden. And the reason that I do this is because I think it's really important for new gardeners especially to see how a garden looks from week to week and follow the same plants and hopefully get some of the experience that I'm getting virtually on how plants grow and how to deal with problems when they arise. Um, and of course my garden is just one of many like types of solutions that you can find to problems, but I really hope that at least my one singular experience can help add to all of the um, experience that you are gaining in your first years of gardening, because there is a lot to learn and it takes time to learn these things by yourself because gardens can only grow so fast. So before we even get to the tomato row, we see this massive pumpkin plant, which I think it's a pumpkin. It is hard to say, but we are starting to get the first baby fruits on it. And they are, you know, at least conceivably pumpkin shaped for now. We'll have to see how they grow up. Um, but this plant, I've been checking obsessively for squash bug eggs. Um, if you ever see them, they generally tend to be like in the underside of the leaves in these little nooks. Um, and they'll be like brownish red and all kind of stuck to the leaf in a row and to get rid of them basically you have to tear them off and um, squish them like not even just squishing them in your fingers because it's too hard I usually rub them against this stone to actually squish them because they are kind of hard um, and I've just been checking and checking just to make sure that I don't let the squash bug population get out of hand but as this plant gets more and more leaves, checking every single leaf becomes less and less feasible. Um, we'll see how it goes. Right now I'm on top of it. All right, and so the first row here is the tomato row and you can see things are, are falling down. They definitely need to be tied up to the trellis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prune and start tying up and you guys get to watch. So some of the tomatoes are tall enough to just thread through here like this. Um, and if they were not tall enough, I just gave them cute little strings to kind of hold them up because they have been trying to fall over. And then I went ahead and pruned off almost all of the lower leaves and any suckers because I have so many tomatoes here, I do have to single stem them. Otherwise they will crowd each other out and uh, give each other disease and all these things that are not so great for tomatoes. If you want to have tomatoes and prune them less intensely, you just have to plant them farther apart. Um, and then you can have multiple stems or you know, if you give them a big wide space, you can even just let them go mostly natural. And uh, at that point you have not just like a tomato going straight up, but like a tomato jungle. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this second row here. At the front, I've got a few more tomatillos. I do have a couple here at the front of the tomato row. Um, I've got onions still going down the middle. You can see all the little pom-poms or onions that went to seed. And I have these lettuces going to seed right here, um, which I am still like dawdling and not deciding on whether or not I'm going to keep them. I guess that decision will get made once I see them start crowding out other stuff, um, at which point I may or may not have any seeds from them. We'll have to see. 
onions are pretty close to being done. Most of them have flopped, which means it's about time to think about pulling them. Um, these ones that have gone to seed are not going to flop usually because this seed stalk is so, um, so firm compared to all the other leaves. And somebody had been asking me if you can still eat onions that have gone to seed. And the answer is yes, absolutely. You can eat onions basically any time. Um, there's not a lot that an onion can do that'll make it inedible. You can eat all of the leaves as well as green onions as they're growing. Um, and you can pick them young. You can wait until they grow all the way. The only thing with onions that have gone to seed is that um, this giant stalk in the middle um, makes it really difficult to store these onions long term. So if you're planning on curing and storing your onions at room temperature, those, these ones that have gone to seed are not good candidates for that. But otherwise they are perfectly edible in every other way that you would normally eat an onion. My tomatillos are starting to make fruits and that is really exciting. I haven't grown tomatillos in a long time um, and I'm growing them this year because I saw the started plants at the store. I hadn't planned on planting them but they were started and they were cheap and my mom can't have tomatoes so I would really like to make some garden salsa this year that she can actually eat. So that is a main motivator for growing tomatillos. Farther down the row are these radishes which have gone to seed. Oh little bee. Um, so these radishes that have gone to seed, they are spreading. You can see right here is an eggplant that I've planted. Um, and I think these are starting to jungle up. I'm gonna have to pull even more of them. I might end up with only a couple of plants. Um, but radishes, a reason to let them go to seed is they make these pods, um, which are perfectly edible. They taste kind of like a green bean and a radish had a baby. Um, you can stir fry them, you can eat them raw, you can pickle them. Um, very interesting harvest off of um, a radish that has gone to seed. I would theoretically like to have some radish seeds saved myself um, just for the sustainability aspect, um, but we'll see if that works out this year because I definitely don't want to shade out all of my eggplant. I think also once these onions are out of here it'll look a lot less crowded. These only have, you know, like their, their, their time is numbered in days at this point. Um, and potatoes, honestly, are not that far behind. These purple potatoes have been looking awesome. And recently, I was looking under, yeah, here we go. You see that? It's hard to tell because it's the same color as the dirt, but that right there is a pretty large purple potato. Um, Got to keep it covered because sunlight, um, not great for potatoes, but that is exciting. These are really close to being done at this point. And with potatoes, um, similar to onions, you can pull them anytime. You can pull them early and have small, like more delicate potatoes. Um, and I think you can even cure the ones that you pull early. But um, to get the maximum size out of your potatoes, you kind of want to wait until the plants die back a bit and then go ahead and dig everything up. These other potatoes, these Serpo Miras, are not looking nearly as good. You can see all these spots on their leaves and the yellowing. Um, that looks to me like probably a bacterial infection and it seems to be only on the Serpa mirrors and not the purple ones. Um, these were supposed to be disease resistant, um, but my purple ones are like, they, this is their second year planted in this spot. So they are going to be slightly better suited for this climate, um, as opposed to these, which I brought in new. Um, and these upper leaves look great. They look fine. Um, these plants are struggling, but I don't think they're going to die imminently. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. Some of the ones down there look a little worse, but I think I'll still get potatoes from them, even if they do die a little bit early. So down the other side of this row is most of my other eggplants. I do have a couple of hot, uh, not hot peppers, sweet peppers here. Um, and eggplants are looking great except for Let's see, yeah, this one got munched on a little bit, um, but currently I'm not too worried about it. Um, this eggplant within the next couple of weeks is going to explode with growth and whatever's chewing on it will definitely not be able to keep up. All right, on this third row, the trellises, there are peas and these are getting close to the end of their life. Um, 
I was away for Memorial Weekend and a lot of these that I normally would pull um, before the peas inside really start forming to eat the whole pod um, got away from me. So now I am mostly waiting on these to form peas and I'm going to shell them and have shelled peas. Um, and honestly, as soon as I start seeing a lot of, oh my gosh, Kata, what are you doing? Um, as soon as I start seeing a bunch of sprouts coming up um, that are viable and going to continue surviving, I'll just go ahead and pull the peas out. Back here past the uh, trellises are my fava beans, some volunteer sunflowers, and hot peppers down in here. Now the hot peppers, um, as Kata is pointing out, are um, pretty small. Hey. Hey. Hot peppers are pretty small and I am thinking that it has to do with these sunflowers. Somebody mentioned to me that sunflowers can kill the things near them and um, when I finally had a chance to look into that because that sounded kind of crazy um, it is true um, and so I'm probably when I'm done filming going to tear out these sunflowers um, and see if that helps with the the stunting because I'll make a whole video about it later but basically sunflowers have this plant self-defense where they're like we want to win and grow here and we don't want anything else to compete with us and so they have this special chemical that they can release into the soil to help kill the other plants that might compete with it for nutrients. You can see this one which is maybe the closest pepper to the sunflower is like actively wilted. Um, so probably gonna do something about that. Meanwhile the fava beans seem fine. Um, these beans are getting very close to harvest time um, and they're still making more near the top but probably once I get a good harvest off of these I'll go ahead and pull them out so that these little guys can get more sun. All right this last row has the remnants of a couple of lettuces, onions, some random basils and nasturtiums and then further down we start a row of sweet peppers. Now I've had volunteer sunflowers here for a while as well um, and they are supposed to affect lettuce but the lettuce hasn't seemed to be affected. Like it grew really well with these sunflowers near it. The only thing I can think of is I never had sunflowers here before, but I did have sunflowers near the back for two years straight before this. Um, and so I'm thinking that the, that um, chemical is kind of built up in the soil there over time and made it worse over there than it is over here. Anyway, enough about the sunflowers. I don't want to say too much about that before I have all my sources sorted out. Um, but the peppers over here are definitely doing better than the ones that are underneath the sunflowers, even though these are a little shaded out as well. I did come through and pull the flowers off of these recently because they're still just a little small to really do, um, do, do a good job making fruit. But hopefully they will grow up a little bit more and then try again with the fruit, um, especially once I get these onions out. I think they'll be quite a bit happier. All right, let's check out the raised beds now. I have this fig here in a pot near the raised bed. Um, I got this from the botanical garden sale and it looks like it is finally budding out. You can see these little green tips right here and here and this little baby leaf coming up right here. Um, this fig has really kind of struggled and uh, I think I just probably need to keep better track of watering it. I'm not used to having containers. Sorry about that plane, got kind of loud. The cilantro slash coriander is doing a good job making its little coriander seeds. Um, these will be great for spices later in the year. And the lavender is looking absolutely lovely. Look at some of these. I've started um, cutting little lavender flowers to dry inside and I'm really excited about having a few cups of lavender tea. The sage did flower but it did it so fast that I didn't really get a chance to see 
much of the flowers um, and now it is looking a little upset um, which can often happen after something goes to seed because if it successfully goes to seed it's like oh, well I'm done um, this section of the plant over here looks pretty healthy um, but I didn't see any flower stalks going up over here um, so I'll probably prune back some of these uh, more unhappy looking bits of the plant and give the healthy looking bits room to bush out a little better. I also got to prune it back from this parsley which did actually recover and is looking like it's gonna be a regular parsley plant for me now which is really relieving because it, <laughs> a few weeks ago it was just literally sticks with no leaves. My thyme plant is finishing up flowering and I want to kind of point out to you the color difference. If you can see these outer leaves are taking on a more brownish color and there's these fresher leaves in here that are just kind of a richer color of green um, and that's how you can tell that's the new growth that isn't flowering growth. I've still got my carrots in container over here. They could probably use watering more often as well. Um, this catnip that has been sat upon by the cats is still alive. Um, licorice mint going off and peppermint definitely not struggling over here. You can actually see it's starting to put out these purple root looking things. Mm -hmm. um, this is it trying to spread already. Um, it's not even that big and it's trying to take over. And then this second raised bed that I have right here, things are growing well. Obviously this kale is still here. I still need to take it out, especially because it is trying to shade out my chives. Um, this is all perfectly edible kale though. Maybe it's a little tough. Um, so maybe looking at doing kale chips or something with it. Um, another parsley plant here and the chamomile has really um, started looking much healthier than it was. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to see this plant keep growing as well. This top section here is not looking the best. I should probably take out these lettuces that have finally gone to seed. Um, but the nasturtiums are struggling. You can see this one's already trying to flower. Um, this one's already trying to flower because they think they're going to die. Which, um, I mean, by the looks of them, I don't disagree. <laughs> um, it's just really sad because I had really hoped to have overflowing nasturtiums here. Um, what I can do is try replanting um, seeds here from the start and see if that helps. Um, additionally, there is this nasturtium here, which is doing much better. The Greek oregano still going strong. The lemon thyme finally looking a little better after it got over its transplant shock. And one more parsley plant over here. If I get a bumper crop of parsley, the plan is to make a bunch of chimichurri sauce to go on steaks and uh, other meaty things probably. Maybe I'll try and do a chimichurri tofu. Who knows, but I love chimichurri sauce and I don't get it very often so I'm growing the parsley for it. We finally made it over here to the berry patch where I am harvesting pretty much every day that I can. Um, you can see very easily here because the strawberry is isolated that it has started making runners. All of these strawberries in here have started making runners and a uh, pro tip if you want strawberry plants to share or put somewhere else in your garden you can just cut these off, um, especially you see those little roots coming out. Especially if you wait till they have a couple more roots, you can just cut these off and um, plant them somewhere else. And as long as you take good care of them until they get rerooted, um, you can have more plants. That's how this one got here um, from all the way over there because I wanted this section to kind of fill out a little bit faster as far as ground cover. Um, and I probably do need to look at cutting back some of these strawberry leaves because they have been choking out the blueberries that they have been trying to protect and that is because the blueberries have not been growing fast enough um, and that is yeah that is a problem but strawberry leaves once you cut them don't have to go to waste actually they make a really really pleasant tea um, so recommend trying that out if you haven't yet and also look at this Look at all these little baby fruits. So the strawberries have kind of taken a break. They are regrouping and making more berries. I came out here and picked maybe like 10 berries last night, which is not a lot compared to what I've been getting, but it looks like another bumper crop is on the way. And 
These are June bears, so I really thought they were supposed to put on all their fruit at once. But I'll have to do a little more research and figure out if it comes in flushes. Oh, look at that. That's a pretty strawberry. This is one of the bigger strawberries that I've had. They've all been kind of on the smaller side, but that looks great. Blackberry bushes are behind them here, and you can see I'm starting to get some of them ripening up. Um, this one might be ripe if this little ant will let me have it. There we go. Yeah, so a ripe blackberry will kind of easily get tugged off of the bush. If you are trying to tug on one that's unripe, for example this one, like I can put pretty good force on this and it's not going anywhere. And so when you have one like this that's not quite ripe and maybe you don't notice before you start pulling on it, that's how you would know. Um, if you are going to make jam, as I've said before, picking them a little underripe is preferred if you don't want to add extra pectin to your mix, which is how I try to make jam. And I learned this lesson the hard way um, by accidentally making pretty much blackberry syrup instead of jam. Um, and that ended up going really well. We did blackberry lemonades with it. But yeah, underripe is usually the way to go because you're adding so much sugar to jam. The little bit of tartness from the underripe fruit is actually really balancing for the overall flavor of the jam in my opinion. I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do about this mess. These really large branches are just, they're, go they're gonna go everywhere. One of them I've managed to train to the trellis, but I don't really have trellis room for these. And um, I'm not about to put in another trellis here and damage all these strawberries. So might just have to break down and do some aggressive pruning. I still need to figure out what exactly, um, what type of pruning would be best for these blackberries. But I think I'm gonna have to get pretty, pretty aggressive about it pretty fast. Same with the raspberries they are going everywhere like i almost have to mow over some of them to keep the grass down and um yeah they're making so much fruit i pulled maybe um another like store-bought sized package of them last night and i could probably do that again today i think it is about jam time i've been freezing them as they come in and uh, i think i have about enough for a couple of jars of jam at least Something that I find to be very interesting is these newer stalks, I wasn't really expecting to see them fruit right away, um, but you can see this new stalk that came up this year is already starting to make flowers. And that makes me wonder like how long this raspberry harvest is gonna go on. I'd kind of thought they would like flower and fruit for a little bit and then be done for most of the summer, but all of this suggests otherwise. And these plants are supposed to fruit in the spring and the fall. So um, I guess follow along if you want to see how that shapes up. I'm kind of learning along with you guys as I go because this is my first time uh, growing raspberries or blackberries or strawberries even. All right guys, well I'm going to take my basket and actually go do a little bit of harvesting of those berries and probably also grab the peas. Um, but I'm gonna leave you guys here. Um, once again, if you're new, I do this every single week. The tours come out on Wednesdays. If you are a patron, you usually get them a day early if I am uh, on top of my editing and the weather allows for me to actually film on time early. Um, you can check out my Patreon below. I also give out um, exclusive stickers to patrons um, and the new set for this year is actually coming very soon. So keep an eye open for that. But um, all that being said, Thank you guys so much for the birthday wishes last week. I did end up getting um, some drip irrigation and a weather station, um, both of which were things that I needed but didn't ask for. Um, and all of y'all's suggestions, even though I didn't get all of them for my birthday, are definitely things to be looking into getting very soon, um, assuming the finances of everything work out. But um, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting my channel. And until next time, happy gardening.